You're being chained up and dragged away. You're thrown in jail for five years. And when you do finally get out, you owe the government $250 million. You may be asking yourself, what did I do to incur such a harsh judgment? Well, you might do it later on today. Download music. I'm here today to prove to you that illegally downloading music is far more detrimental to the record industry than it is to the actual bands and musicians involved. This morning, I will explain and discuss the processes, statistics, and opinions of that of musicians as well as the record industry regarding illegally downloading music. I will explain the laws and punishments of illegally downloading music as well as reasons why people do it. I will use statements, opinions of that of musicians as well as fallacies the industry uses to save their business. We are living in, we are living in a digital day and age, the age of the iPod, a day where music can be found and had within seconds and stored in gigs in our pockets at all times. It's no wonder stores like Tower Records are closing down and bowing down to the almighty iTunes. Record stores are closing, the radio sucks, and for $9.99 on iTunes, why not just pick up the album on LimeWire for free? The Record Industry Association of America, or the RIAA, calls it copyright infringement, or stealing music. They claim stealing music is illegal. Stealing music betrays songwriters, stifles careers, and threatens the livelihood of thousands of musicians across the globe. So there's no question that there are federal laws against this, and it is illegal. And in fact, you can serve up to five years in prison or $150,000 for each offense. That means $150,000 for each song illegally downloaded. The Piracy Report of the Record Industry claims that one in three downloaded albums is an illegal album, creating a $4.5 billion pirate market and destroying music industry jobs across the globe. A study at UC Berkeley found that the industry is losing about one-fifth of its sales to illegal downloads. But let's look at the other side of the spectrum, because in fact, bands and musicians have something quite different to say about it. British musicians Robbie Williams, Annie Lennox, Billy Bragg, Blur, and Radiohead are quoted in an independent musician magazine saying, the public should not be prosecuted for downloading illegal music. Billy Bragg says, if we follow the music industry down that road, we will be doing nothing more than being part of a protectionist effort. It's like trying to put toothpaste back in the tube. We want to side with the audience, the consumer. So ironically, musicians are actually supporting the illegal downloading of their own music. So why is there this opposition between the record industry and the actual bands and musicians? Lead singer of the world famous Radiohead, Tom York, gives some of his insight, saying, I like the people at our record company, but the time is at hand when you have to ask why anyone needs one. Radiohead released its seventh studio album in 2007 in Rainbows. Um, their record deal with EMI was just up, so the band decided to produce it completely independently. Also, they produced it completely online and completely for free, asking fans to pay whatever they wanted for it. Some paid nothing, most paid nothing. Some paid a penny, some paid $20. It's a very groundbreaking and risky and surprising move on the independent band's part. But as Tom York says, every record for the last four has been leaked. So the idea was really good then. And in fact, it paid off for them because In Rainbows has sold 3 million copies, won the best album of 2007, won two Grammy Awards, and by October 2008, Warner Chappelle revealed that it was the most profitable Radiohead album compared to all the other CDs. So if a band, a successful band, can produce a CD completely independently and ask nothing for it and make more money than they ever made on six previous studio albums, and there must be something wrong with the record industry. So when the recording industry said that illegally downloading is cutting one-fifth of their sales, perhaps they were right, but it is their sales, and bands like Radiohead are making more money than they ever could with these labels. So this is a scary rally for record companies and a bright, exciting future for bands. So when the news, government, record industry, or even a sticker on a CD you just bought tell you you shouldn't steal from bands, what they really mean is you shouldn't steal from them. Stealing is stealing, I'm not arguing or advocating that, and illegally downloading music is illegal, and it's costing someone money, but it's not the people that we're led to believe it is. What I am saying is the record industry is fading away, as bands like Radiohead prove that downloading music is far more detrimental to the record industry than it is to actual musicians and bands.
Donald, what did you think? Scott, I, I thought that uh, the introduction was pretty solid. I thought that your claim was clear. And at the end of the speech, I thought you did the same kind of thing, reminding us about what the point was that you were trying to make. You do a little minimization of the notion that uh, you're advocating illegal downloading. The example that you use, though, that's the main uh, way that you're reasoning. You're dependent on that singular example. And there needs to be a demonstration that that example is typical or representative, uh, that it's a that it's something that's a, like a, it's a viable economic model. The fact that a successful band can do this, I think, uh, doesn't automatically bode well for all the other bands or, for instance, uh, new artists and that sort of thing. So it may or may not be the case. What I think you need are some additional examples and maybe some authorities that could make this inference. Uh, it, it's sort of like when the uh, I don't know. You, you probably knew somebody who, you know, ran really fast in high school or got an 800 on one section of the SAT exam. They said, oh, "That's easy. Everybody can do that." And you wanted to punch him in the nose. You know, it's like, "Okay, I'm looking at radio ads and they're saying, say, we did it. We made money." Um, okay, you know, how likely is that going to be that sort of thing? But I think that you had a, an interesting explanation of it. I'd be careful about the inference that you're drawing. I, I like the idea that. Uh, Prosecuting the uh, fans or the people doing the downloading is not really an appropriate way to go. I think you could expand on that a little bit more. That really seemed to be what uh, Robbie Williams and Annie Lennox and those other folks were talking about. Not so much that they were you know, down with the illegal downloading, but they were not down with the uh, prosecution of people who were doing that downloading. Is there an alternative model to deal with uh, those folks? or? you know, some, some other structure or way to handle that situation. And, you know, finally, it, like you said, if technology ultimately renders uh, selling music moot, then that's the way it is. Everybody can, you know, do the best they can to make their living as a musician without selling their music. And, uh, I, you know, but I'm just not sure what the scenario is going to be on that one. All right. Thank you.